making a we're making a version of the blood orange that I've made many times before. We're grinding the grain. This is Pilsner uh, malt, Belgian Pilsner, and uh, made this recipe oh many 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 times. This time we're just gonna wing it and uh, make it uh, what I remember, and it might not be exactly the same, but uh, we want to get something in the keg. <laughs> How you doing? So let's get these grains ground. Uh, it'll be a total of 11 pounds of uh, grain, basically, that's it. Uh. Yes, batch number 112 today. It's going to be a blood orange. I'm not going to follow the traditional recipe that I've made uh, many, many times. We switch it up just a little bit every different time, and uh, that's what we're doing today is a, a blood orange. We got our electric heater in there, getting the uh, water going. It's taking forever. We're gathering the last of our strike water here. We want to come in at uh, oh, approximately 152 to 154. We're hoping we hit that. You want to shut that main tank off? The other way. Turn it tight. Tight. Keep it tight. Tight. Yes. It is tight. How much tighter do you want? Do you want me to break it? So we're going in with this uh, strike water here. We're going to be, uh, it's a blood orange. And we came in low. I had to turn the flame on there to get her uh, up to enough temperature. Uh, ran a verl off on here. We didn't show it on camera. Going right off to the boil kettle. This is batch 112, a blood orange beer we're using. We're going to be making. Matched on the draining. Slightly on a little slant because the garage floor is on a little slant, but that's not going to hurt nothing. We're going to get a, a pre boil reading shortly and uh, see what she come in at. I'm guessing about 1040. Amarillo hops, two ounces. Are in the hot break just happened. Oh, I love the smell of these. And the uh, last edition is going to be Citra. So we'll set a timer here for. Uh, so we set a timer for 40 minutes. Uh, 10:40 pre-boil on the blood orange. She's a nice, uh, nice brew. So 10:40 pre-boil. We just got our hops in, and we set a timer for 20 minutes or 40 minutes. So we're off with this brew. We're doing good on the blood orange. So yeah, here we go. We got the blood orange. We got the puree sitting on the stand over there. Seven feet from where I need it. So we got the yeast. We're going to be using SO5 again. But we got a, a brew here out of the tap again. This is the uh, Lemon Blast. This is your Lemon Blast beer. Oh shit. Let's just make everybody dizzy with the camera. How you doing? You just shake it around or something. So this is Lemon Blast again. The wife just poured one. She says, you're working so hard brewing that blood orange beer, you deserve a lemon blast. How you doing? I think she's right. Why wouldn't I? Why wouldn't she be? Oh, yeah. I love it. I'm just wondering if she's trying to trick me. It's not mine, but I know my beers. This is my lemon blast. Buffalo, I think that's the city. City of good neighbors, or whatever you want to call it. Probably just none of this footage. So, yeah, we're into the... Into the blood orange. We're going to put the second edition of hops in shortly. Why wouldn't I? Last 20 minutes on the uh, blood orange batch. Then go to two ounces of citra hops. And five minutes from now, we'll put in the uh, Irish moss. 
and the uh, yeast nutrient. <laughs> Last 15 minutes. Last time I did not have a spoon for the yeast nutrient <laughs> for a K. So I put it on this spoon. It's about a tablespoon. <laughs> so we'll put that in now. Get that into the into the mix. And like I say, it's the last 15 minutes. In goes the uh, Irish moss. A cap full of Irish moss. She's in. So 15 minutes will be uh, flame out. I get the work shoulder in there, get all that stuff set up, and uh, I still got some beer sitting here. That video will come out and uh, should be gone before this video is out, but that's just the way it works. <laughs> Cool enough to transfer to the fermenter. Dump out our last of our sanitizer that was in there. I ran a, I cleaned the spigot. Valves are closed. And we're off with the uh, blood orange brew. And it gets the uh, Oregon puree, like I said. This is the Oregon puree. It's going to be going in there. Blood orange puree. We'll give it a little shake. <clears throat> As I do this, I like to pull the uh, wood chiller out. So I'm going to get over there and pull the wood chiller out. Maybe the wife will watch the bucket for me that we're not going to overflow or miss the uh, mark. <clears throat> I like to wait till I'm about half full and then I'll dump in the puree. I'm just going to let this video run for a while. And I'll tilt this kettle for a faster pour. Shook up our puree, sanitized the top of it, used a sanitized opener, and this blood orange is a different, it's not as dark as the last one I had, <coughs> let it aerate from a good distance. Dead end. I'm just going to tilt the kettle, get the rest of that lovely work. So it goes in faster, I tilt. Picking up a little tube. That's it, we're done. So off. Covering. We're going to put the yeast in first, we decided we don't want to screw up on that, so let's put it on the floor, we're going to spl sprinkle it into the vert, always put it into the vert, not onto the floor. <coughs> it sounds like it's on, find your airlock. Just to clean this airlock, get it into the bubbler, stain with a little wine, salted blood orange brew batch. 
Nash, 112, done. That's the uh, blood orange. This is the peach mint. Man, she got sticky on there. I don't know why. I ran some off the kettle onto the side. Aren't sure we're going to get a reading on here and see where she stands. Remember to pull the bubbler out. You don't want to get a back suck. And here goes our sample. And we plan on kegging if it looks like it's on the money here. I have to put it up here and then get a better reading in there. She came in at 1014 on the blood orange and calculates out to 4.7 percent uh, a little over a little over four and a half percent 4.74 so she's close to five percent but she's a nice taste in beer we just tasted it so we're going to go to the keg here in a few minutes all right after eight days of carbonation on the blood orange we're going to get our sample here and she looks like she's done oh yeah she looked good now I'm going to bigger her head, just drop it down a little. That's a nice little pour. Oh, we got a quarter of a finger head on that. We'll take this outside for a taste test. <laughs> Why wouldn't I? Yeah, this is uh, made with uh, five, pounds of, uh, five pounds of Pilsner, five pounds of two-row, uh, four ounces, I believe, of rye, and I think six ounces of uh, Caramel 120. Uh, Amarillo hops, I believe, and Citra. I might have that wrong. you got to go back and watch the video. I probably got that wrong, but so, it's something like that. That's the blood orange, and we love it. Plus, the, you put the blood orange in there. That's the puree we use. And this is the... Uh, I constantly change the recipe. This is just a little bit different than some of the others, but the blood orange, it's really, really, really good. And along with the blood orange... We're doing some nice Chevetta's chicken. Some nice Chevetta's chicken we love here. I'm gonna find the hot spot of the fire. Stir this up a little. I'm gonna stir the coals a little like I always do. I put in chives in there for the smoke and stuff. Love the chives. Then we hit it with some more Chevetta's sauce. Da -da 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 -da. That'll steam it up. Give us the taste we're looking for. <coughs> so we close that up for a while. I'll do this live in one second. We're hanging discs up by the grapes over there to keep the squirrels and the birds away. So I found another one. It's got to drill a hole in that one. So without getting you folks dizzy, why would I? And get back to this blood orange. The head has faded away. Whew, it's hot out here. 90 degrees. And the outskirts of Buffalo here Sunday. Tomorrow's supposed to be 91 on Monday. Oh, I think it's August 8th. So here's your blood orange. Five pounds of Pilsner, five pounds of two-row, uh, four ounces of rye, uh, six ounces of caramel 120. I believe Amarillo and Citra Hops. You just smell beer. <laughs> mm. Oh, yeah. Mm. Get that little taste of that blood orange in the background there. Damn good beer. I make it all the time. Oh, this one came in at four. Oh, four, a little under four and a half percent. So it's a nice, nice sessionable beer for a hot day like today. It's like a lawnmower beer, but no lawnmowers for me. It's uh, it's not uh, not a good thing. So, probably get another one of these. Four point four point three eight percent, if I'm not mistaken. And we just did a brew the other day again. <laughs> so, until next time, folks. Proust. Got the chicken on the grill there. The Chevettes, we love it. And. <laughs> Company coming again. We're always swimming in a pool here. Wife's in there right now, as a matter of fact. Uh, so, until next time, Browsed. Great summer so far.